We started out thinking, oh, we're just going to help put furniture in the homes of those that need it. But what we saw happening was, wow, people are, people's lives are being changed here. Ours, the volunteers who are helping us get the furniture out, the people who are donating the furniture, we're all being changed by this. When Jackie and I started with the green chair, we just had the idea uh, from my work as a real estate agent and her work as a stager with me, we saw that when we went to someone's home, they always had too much stuff. So the first step we asked them was to declutter. Um, we saw again and again that people are very attached to their things. They would say three responses, but it's still good, it's still useful, and someone might need it. Those three reasons is why the green chair was born. We saw in the community that there was in fact need, but there wasn't a vehicle in Raleigh or in Wake County to match those things um, that people no longer needed with people who were actually in need. It's really remarkable to see something that's been sitting in your attic that you had a hard time parting with, perhaps. Seeing that put right into the hands of somebody that's in need and somebody that um, it can make a difference in their lives, that's an amazing thing. I think about some chairs that had been in my grandmother's house. They had sentimental value. I remember sitting in those chairs at Christmas time. One particular chair that I always chose to be my seat. When it was time for those things to come to me, I really didn't have a place for them and they didn't necessarily fit with the you know things that we had in our home and, and um, absolutely I wanted to choose to bring them here. I'm on a tear at my house. You are? You did? So this is probably your 10th donation, right? I brought in a wicker recliner and some accessories, um, some baskets, slice mats, shower curtains. I just told them that I had two more recliners in my attic that I was going to be bringing. And I hung on to them, but, but it's time for someone else to enjoy them. The key to it was going to be finding community partners that could place the furnishings, that Jackie and I were not the best vehicle for deciding where the furniture should go. We might be a vehicle for the community to donate those resources, but then we were going to depend on our partner agencies to get it to the people in need. So we have over 55 partner agencies that come from um, community uh, agencies and organizations that are nonprofits, as well as governmental agencies and several church communities. They seek out the clients who they think could most benefit from coming to the Green Chair Project. And what they're looking for are people who are in transition, who have recently moved into housing, people who are maybe fleeing domestic violence and now need to furnish their new homes. Um, but really we let the agencies and the case managers make the decision about who would best qualify to come here. I came here through a program, Step Up Ministry. I started there looking for a job because I do have a felony, so it was very hard for me to find employment. Um, I found out about Step Up. They have a jobs class where you take once a week. And they teach you different skills. So I was able to find employment and I went on to another program they have called Life Skills. It taught me um, just how to get my life back in order for me and my son to be more independent and dependable on myself. And so I just graduated from there Thursday and to me this is kind of like a uh, extra graduation gift for that just being able to participate in it and not only us, me and my son, complete a program, but be able to come to a home and a fully furnished home. So, When a participant comes, they pay a furnishing fee, and the furnishing fee um, is fairly minimal. For about $200, you can furnish a one-bedroom apartment. We think that it's important for people to feel ownership of the furniture, to feel proud of it. It's really not a handout, it's a hand up. So every item that goes out on the showroom floor has points attached to it. So when they're coming through and they're shopping, they're using a currency called the, the green points. So what we're going to do is um, these are our green points. You have budgeted 125 points. Yes. Um, and so on that ring is 125 points. Okay. When you choose an item, you'll give me points, the, po the number of points that the item is worth. Okay. And if you need some change, I can, I can help okay. you out with that too. Okay. <laughs> okay. Decision made. What happens okay. is the, the participants have 
the chance to budget for themselves. It's not us saying, you only get 125 points and you only have five points left. I mean, they know. They know, you know, just by looking in their hand how many points they have left, so they are empowered to make those decisions them themselves. It's a really fun tool and the participants seem to love it. So these are our kitchen packs. They're all set up by the size. Okay. So we have, um, this is a set for si like six play settings. These are four play settings and then down there are eight play settings. Okay. And what you get basically is this entire sample that's behind you. Um, you get, oh. um, it's salt and pepper shakers and utensils and glasses and, um, I mean, it's, it's a whole set. The whole list is right here. We have come up with a list of, um, everything needed in a basic kitchen. We've got dishes and glasses, cups, silverware in, um, here. And then when we get a pack put together, we um, put together a display basket. I'm retired as a food stylist where I was setting up um, things for photography and production companies to make food and tables look beautiful. So this is kind of an extension of that and it's fun to still have the creativity. Then we put in fun extras as we have them. So, you know, sometimes it might be a salad bowl with salad servers or another time we often put in trivets um, for things like that and again we try and keep things colorful and so when they go home and open their box we always say it's kind of like Christmas because there's all, all the surprises. We didn't want the families who came here to feel like they were leaving with quote better than nothing. We wanted them to feel like they were in charge, that they were able to make decisions. But look, this chair right here comes with this. And you like pink. I, <laughs> I like this picture from this picture right here. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. But I think it goes nice. with that, um, that couch set. Oh, with the gray. And, yes, it's nice. She is the decorator. She is good eye. I like yeah, it. I, I like one. it. Yeah, here, would you mind something here, Brian? First just a glance at. Yeah, this one comes with the same. It's a rug and that's your shower curtain. This one looks like, oh, it has storage and a little basket in there, waste basket. Uh, well, since we started the Green Share in 2010, we have touched over 600 households. Yes. I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys. Really Happy for, for you. you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Happy you so for much. you. Thank you. After we helped over 88 families recover from the tornado, and we realized that, that what we've been doing, the same benefit we, we can also provide to those who are overcoming crisis and uh, disaster. Smoke and flames at a Raleigh apartment complex so intense people had inside had to jump to save themselves. One mother had to toss her baby out of the window to safety. Everyone survived, but many lost nearly everything they own. Today, people who lived at 611 Peyton Street returned to salvage what they could. We couldn't open the door and that was our only way out. And we had to jump from the third story window. We didn't leave with keys, cell phones, clothes or anything. We had to just jump. You know, just had to make that split decision. Pretty much lost everything in a matter of seconds. Sit down, try it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the ultimate test. It's you comfy. It. Yeah. Nice and comfy. It. <laughs> this place is beautiful and oh, fine. We want it to be nice and too. organized. Yeah. Do you like that one? Yeah, I like this one. That was the first one she went to. <laughs> I think she liked it. I know, I know. When people start touching things, <laughs> they... <laughs> Don't take it if you don't love it. I love that, you know, that they say that to a client, that if you don't love it, don't take it. Um, because they get to pick what they really enjoy or what they will want in their home. <laughs> these are full and these are queen. Okay. Um, so you can just pick what you like and take a look at the little labels. So okay. this set right here has two sheets, a pillow sham, a dust ruffle. Um, so they all have, you know, different items inside of them. Okay. What we've got is a mattress pad, two sets of sheets, a skirt, and a blanket, mm -hmm. and a pillow sham. And we try to put all of that in every pack if we can. When I found out about them, and my kids had all left home, and I was kind of in that now what phase of my life and just didn't find the thing that suited me. And when I found about this, it was like, okay, here's my home. You know, I love to sew, I love to quilt. I just felt like the good Lord put me in the place I'm supposed to be. It's like I use all my talents in many, many different ways. I think the greatest joy 
that I experience at the Green Chair is when I get to talk to the clients, work with the clients, when I get to talk with the volunteers and work alongside of them, when I get to greet the furniture donors and write their receipts, because I can see in each one of them how maybe their lives are changed just a little bit by the Green Chair Project, that they, they, they get it, that they see the sense of meaning in, behind what we do. Whether it's getting rid of, of your stuff and putting it to good use, or the meaning of using your unique talents as a volunteer, or it's the participants who are coming through and see, wow, they're celebrating my recovery. This is a community that really cares. Just to see them smile for, for a change. When I meet them, they're broken and they're sad, and they've lost a lot of things and don't know what's next. And when they are leaving here, they're grinning from ear to ear, and they get to go home and arrange furniture. So, um, you know, that's, that's good. I'm a, my favorite part of today was meeting everybody mm -hmm. and just seeing and just seeing how much help and support that we, that we did get and we were able to get everything we needed from you guys and we really appreciate it. We really appreciate it. We love you guys so much. <laughs> when people come through the door here and they leave, they're happy. They'll cry. They they'll give us hugs. They they're finally completing the journey that that they've been on. What gives me the most joy out of this experience is I have to say just. Being able to provide for my family, being able to give them safe housing, being able to, for us to wake up and not have the stress of trying to furnish a brand new home after having to pay to get in the home. So now we'll be, we'll be able to just wake up and start our new beginnings just like everyone else starts their daily lives. So it's, it's rewarding, it's gonna be challenging, but at the end of the day, it's just a blessing that I think we'll all cherish, so. I'm excited. I'm truly excited about this. <laughs>